Crone to see you, sir. Show him in, please. Will you come in, Mr. Crone? Well, did you bring it? What's the matter? That girl. Who is she? Miss Layden, my new secretary. And a very capable young woman, too. Layden? How long have you had her? How long? Oh, just about a week now. She came in answer to an ad I put in the paper. Why, what with her? Oh, nothing. I just thought I'd seen her before someplace. Maybe I was wrong. It was just a hunch. What can we turn it over for? If we have to cut it up, we'll... We don't. I let Cummings have ten grand on it to make a trip into Mexico. He's got to reclaim it tomorrow afternoon by five o'clock, or it belongs to me. And supposing he gets back here before five o'clock tomorrow afternoon? He won't. I've arranged to have him delayed. Nice work, Crone. No, nothing like that. He'll have a little trouble with the officials at the border and be held up a couple of days. Well, if that's all, I think we can dispose of it for $50,000. Perhaps a little more. I'll undertake the sale for, uh... Pardon me for interrupting, Mr. Jackson. <laughs> but on this Gordon letter... Did you say, I will have to take action, or I may have to? I wanted to be sure. We'll take action, Miss Layton. Remember that these forms are only used to frighten clients. Oh, yes, of course. And pardon me for coming in. I've seen that girl somewhere. It's a deal, then. You handle it and take the percent cut. Very well. That's fine. I'll lock it up. It's gone. All right. Yes. What, what happened to it? It should be here. I put it. It was right there. I put it there. I put a paper over the top of it. That girl. Oh. I 
I knew it. I knew it all the time. Pull the starter and stop her at the door. What's that? She's gone. Stop her. Call the police. May I come in, Mr. Baxter? Uh, Jimmy? Of course. Come right in, Mrs. Flint. I'm... I'm sorry about the rent money, but... Why, Jimmy, you know that isn't why I came up. I hope you don't think of me as a hard-hearted landlady. Huh? Oh, oh, certainly not. I, I realize and appreciate that, Mrs. Flint, but uh, my pictures haven't been selling, and... Of course they haven't been selling. When you use a dummy as a model. Well, live models cost real money. I know, Jimmy. And that's why I came up. Couldn't I be your model? I'd love to. See? Uh, well, uh, the lay figure is really much better for me, Mrs. Flint. You see, I work rather slowly and it doesn't get tired. Oh, but I'm very strong. And I could wear the veil just like the dummy does. And you could forget it was me. Careful of your dress, Mrs. Flint. You'll get paint on it. I never use live figures. I don't think you want me to be your model. Well, uh, not for this particular picture. You see, when I paint you, I, I want to do something really fine, like uh, a sea nymph. Yes. Yeah. Or a woodland goddess. Oh, I guess you're right, Jimmy. Uh, that costume would hide my figure. Of course. And the veil would hide your face. Mm. Uh, as soon as I finish this picture, we'll plan something that's really grand. Well, Jimmy, don't you dare think of any other model uh, but me. Not a chance, Mrs. Flint. <laughs> There she goes. In that house. The mailman hasn't come by yet, Mrs. Flint. You're too soon. Well, who are you? What do you want? I, I, there's a man after me. <laughs> That's not surprising. I should think there'd be a lot of them. I'm sorry. Sit down and I'll go stop him. Or would you rather I call the police? Oh, no, not the police. Uh, he, the man had a policeman with him. Oh, so it's the police that are after you. Are you, uh... Oh, no, I'm not really, but I can't explain now. Can't you hide me somewhere? Hide you? I couldn't hide a dime in here. They're coming. Listen. Well, what do you want? We are looking for a girl. There are no girls here. I don't rent to girls. These are bachelor apartments. Calm yourself, lady. This girl just came into the building a minute ago. Yeah, a thief. She must have a friend around here somewhere. Who lives on the next floor? Mr. Baxter lives up there. A highly respectable young man. He doesn't have lady callers. What can I do? 
I've got it. You've got what? You'll be my dummy. I'll be your what? The dummy. Here, get into these things, quick. Oh, well, but I can't. You can. Right over what you have on. Hurry. I'll watch the door. Hurry. We'll have a look anyhow. Hurry. You ready? Ready. Now lie down just the way the dummy was. Quiet. Hold that pose. Don't move and don't breathe. Hello. Uh, well, what's up? What happened, Mrs. Flynn? So uh, take it easy. What's the riot all about? Oh, oh I'm sorry, Jimmy. Uh, they're looking for a girl, a thief. Uh, but I told them that you wouldn't have women call us up here. No, uh, he wouldn't be. <laughs> What's that? That's a lay figure. A what? A, a dummy. You know a model. He puts clothes on it and paints pictures. Oh, well, we're looking for a girl that came in the building. Well, she was wearing... I don't care what she was wearing. I have work to do. And I won't have my tenants annoyed. You can see for yourself that the girl isn't here. Yeah, all right, all right. Keep your shirt on. Outrageous, I call it, charging into the private quarters of a gentleman and accusing him of harboring crooks. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Baxter. James Baxter. Thanks, Mr. Baxter. That was a close escape. Well, I hope you're satisfied. Thanks. Uh, sorry to have bothered you. Oh, that's all right. You know, that's strange. I'd swear that girl came into this building. So, you lied to me. This is the way you repay my faith in you, concealing this, uh, this, uh... Hold on, Mrs. Flint. Let me explain. Explain? You can explain it to the judge. Both of you. Help! Police! Come back! She's here! They're sure to catch me now. Get out of that outfit. We'll sneak out the rear door. Oh, she's here! Who? Oh. The girl! The thief! It wasn't the dummy in the room. It was the girl, the thief. The thief? They got away. Well, how could they without passing us? There! There! The back stairway! Take it easy now. Don't look scared and don't run. Ready? Ready. All right. Uh, it's no use, Lee. We'll pick them up later. Well, what did the girl take? A 12-carat diamond. 
Oh, grand larceny. Uh-huh. We'll charge Baxter with compounding a felony. Uh, come on over to the station. Here, this will do. Let's sit down and rest a while. All right, let's have it. What's this all about? Well, nothing. Uh, really, I... I suppose that policeman was following you because he needed the exercise. And what about that man that was with him? Oh, I don't suppose you'll believe me, but that man, his name was Crone. He told the policeman that I'd stolen something. And had you? No. That is to say, the diamond didn't belong to them. The what? It was a diamond that they said I took. A diamond, huh? And it didn't belong to Crone. Maybe you'd better tell me all about it. No. I'm terribly grateful to you, but I don't want you to get mixed up in this. Mixed up in it? Listen, miss. Uh, Cummings. Betsy Cummings. All right, Miss Cummings. I'm in this thing already, right up to my neck. But you haven't done anything. Nothing but interfering with the policeman in the course of his duty, compounding a felony, and becoming an accessory after the fact. By this time, I'm amateur public enemy number one. Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't realize I was getting you into trouble. Oh, that's all right. Forget it. But why did you steal the diamond? Who does own it? It belongs to my father. He had to raise some money for a trip into Mexico to look at a mine. He went to a loan shark named Jaffin. Jaffin sent him to this man, Crone. Yeah? Go on. I saw Crone at the house with Dad. He didn't look just right to me. So when Jaffin advertised for a secretary, I applied for the position. Well, there it is. What's it worth? Now, let me think. I'll give you six dollars for the whole thing. Six dollars? You, that's all it's worth. I don't know why I stay in the business. I'm not making any money. But uh, for this figure, I'll add 50 cents. I'll take it. You will? Uh, one, two, three, four, five. More than it's worth. Six. Fifty. In case this should happen again, my car. I'll see that it doesn't happen again. No. <clears throat> so when I heard what they were going to do, I stole, I mean, I took the diamond. Jaffin said it was worth $50,000. $50,000? Good heavens, let's see it. Oh, well, that's the trouble. I haven't got it. You haven't? Well, where is it? Well, when they were pounding on the door, I... I hid it. I, I was afraid they'd catch me. But you hid it, but where? I stuffed it inside the dummy. And now, if you're a criminal, too, we can't possibly go back there. Nice day, folks. Yeah. We have to go back. If we don't recover that diamond, you and I are due for a stretch in jail. But if we go back now... Oh, not now. Tonight. After it gets dark. I still have my night key. Why, the... You ought to sue her. Yeah, I'll do that. 
soon as I get out of jail. Well, what now? Look. Ben Arman. Second-hand goods. Well, this must be the man she sold your things to. We can go there and buy the dummy back. Yeah. What with? I haven't a dime. I have. I have a little over four dollars. Good. We'll pay our respects to Mr. Arman. It's no good coming here. If Baxter was smart enough to get the girl away, he's certainly not coming back here. Well, we gotta try something. The police haven't found trace of either one of them. You wait here for me. Seventy-two East Third Street. We'd better take a cab. But Jimmy, what if it isn't there? It's got to be there. We must get it tonight. That's the break. Taxi. Eight seventy-two East Third Street. Why didn't you stop them? Because I don't think they have the diamond. It's gotten out of their hands somehow. Somebody at 872 East 3rd Street has it. Well, we better call the police. No, we'll handle this ourselves. The less the police have to do with this deal, the better I'll like it. you in the window with a guitar, maybe. I'd bet a lot of folks stop and look in in the morning. <laughs> Jimmy. Good. Mr. Armand, even though you bought this figure from Mrs. Flint, it belongs to me. I'll pay you what you gave for it. Oh. You give what I pay. But who will pay for my trouble? The handling. The cartage. Who will give me my profit? If she takes you, you have to speak up about it. I don't want to sell anything tonight. That's all right. It is something of mine inside this model. It has nothing to do with you and Mr. Flint or Mr. Baxter. I'll take the form to the next show me. When I buy, I buy as is. Whatever is in the model, when I buy it, it belongs to me. Get it, Betsy. I'll keep him off. Just a minute. I'll take charge of that figure. Who are you and what do you want? You keep out of this, Mr. Arman. That girl and her companion are wanted for grand larceny. Where is that diamond, Miss Layton? Diamond? Where is it? It's mine. It belongs to me. Take the figure, Jaffin. Hold on a minute. You can't do that. No. Well, watch me. Take it out.
get out of here. Where are you going? Come back here. Hey, my merchandise. It's my merchandise. Who's for the paper? Here, the kids. Radio here. I'll see how much they know. Attention all cars. Attention all cars. Description of fugitive. The man is James Baxter. Artist. Six feet tall. About 190 pounds. The last seen was wearing gray coat, yellow shirt, light trousers, black shoes. The name of the girl is unknown. He has been using an alias, Mary Layden. He is four feet four inches tall. Has red hat. Blue tailored suit. Good heaven. The car was last seen going north on Glendon Drive. That is all. We'll have to abandon the car. Every road patrol has that description. Where can we go? Anywhere off the main highway. We have to keep hidden until your dad comes home. That's it. We can go home, to Dad's place. Home? Your place? Uh-huh. But they'll be watching. No, don't you remember? They don't know who I am. You can only get there without being seen. That's the best idea you've had yet. Here, put this diamond where you won't lose it, and where do we go? But wait, Jimmy. I don't want to get you into any more trouble. Actually, you've done nothing. <laughs> What do you mean? The car. I took it, didn't I? That's grand larceny if I never did anything else. Well, which way? No, no. It's like I told you last night. The only name I've got is Layton. Mary Layton. Say, what kind of a police department are you anyway? When a girl can come in here and steal diamonds right from under a man's nose and you can't even find her. News? Yes. And all of it bad. Get a load of this. Cummings slipped through our fingers. Stop. Believed to be on way home. If he gets here by five o'clock, you've got to have his diamond for him, Crone. You're in a fix. I'm in a fix? You mean we are in a fix? But you made the deal with Cummings. I just, uh, well, as a matter of fact, I just agreed to take the stone, that was all. And you did receive it. I gave you the diamond right here in your office. And it was in your possession when it disappeared, not mine. 
But it wasn't my deal. The note was made out to you. And it was you that went to Cummings' house. No, 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 cut it out. It's all right. I'm in on it. Don't you remember? It's 50-50. What's the matter with you? Have you gone crazy? That girl, Miss Layton. Now I remember who she is. You remember her? Good. Why, a crook like that should get 20 years. Crook nothing, you. She's Jerry Cummings' daughter. Jerry Cummings' daughter? Yes. She came into the room the first night I talked to Cummings. Well, call the police. What are you waiting for? Police? Use your head. Don't you see she suspected me and suspected you because you sent me? And that's why she answered my ad and took a job here. Right, boy. Well, what are you... Well, uh, what are we going to do? Find out if there's anybody at Cummings Place. supposed to be an unoccupied house. Well, you needn't be so darn rough about it. I... I forgot. No answer, huh? There's someone there. They took off the receiver and then they cut off. Do... Do you think they heard me? No. He didn't speak. I always do the wrong thing, don't I? Not always. Uh, uh, breakfast is ready. Uh, do you want to wash your face? Not a bad idea. Thank you. But listen, operator. There was somebody there. I heard... Oh, all right. Get your hat. My car's downstairs. The police picked it up on the edge of the town with a model in it. Hey, wait a minute. Aren't we going to take a couple of cops with us? No. Oh, I see. You and I are going out and take a diamond away from this guy, Baxter. Just like we did last night, eh? Maybe you're right. I know Bird will handle him. We'll pick him up on the way. We now present for your entertainment the three ambassadors. Open music in your feet as they come. It smells good. Ready? Mm -hmm. The rhythm in my heart. Sugar? Yes, please. What? Cream? Oh, you're my little nocturne, my rhapsody in blue. You personify a modern symphony. I could be a bird in or a Gershwin too. But honey, you don't know just what you're doing to me. Oh, I feel just like a drum. Cause I go rum de dum de dum to the rhythm in my heart for Tinker, Taylor, Sailor, and the Broker all have their music. Wait, where are you going? What was my song? I thought I'd turn the radio off. Please don't. I like it. Don't you? That's what we need. Strong man. Music in your 
Penny? Shall we go in the other room? Sure. Hey, that was a great breakfast. Glad you liked it. Do you think Dad'll be in today? You dare? Well, I hadn't thought of that. I hope so. They wouldn't have dared to play such a trick if Dad had been here. And he'll undertook the diamond. And, and about you being here, Jimmy. Yeah, I hope so. Oh, he will. Dad's the finest there is. You like him. Look. There he is. That was taken on a hunting trip. Dad's a crack shot. Yeah. Yeah. He looks as though he might be. And all we can do is just stay right here until Dad gets home. And then we'll explain everything. Yes, uh, we'll explain everything. Where's this guy you want beat up? Now, wait just a minute. There's probably nobody there. Look at that veranda. They wouldn't be fools enough to remove it if they wanted to hide. And, Jimmy, no matter what happens, I want you to know that I think you've been splendid. I, I'm afraid I've made a criminal out of you. Jaffin. They have a big thug with them. We'll get out of it some way. If we just keep quiet. No, that won't do. They know we're here. Must have heard you at the telephone. I've got it. Get your hat and the diamond and we'll go out the back way. Look, fella, there ain't nobody in there. Let's bust through the door. That's breaking and entering. Burglary. All we gotta do is to see that they don't get away. Mark, you better go around and watch the back door. We'll stay here. Better go around and see what Mort's found out. I'm all right. Let's get out of here. The dare! The dare to stop him! Stop him? I think that guy's killed, Mort! You lost your nerve? 
no. Good. How's your thumb? My thumb? I don't know. <laughs> We've got to get out of this neighborhood before they call the police. Where is this guy you want, Lamb? Let me at him. Stay out of it! Come on! Howdy, folks. Car bust down? No, just walking. Could we have a drink of water? Sure. Sit right down here and I'll fetch you a nice cold drink. Thanks. I am tired. That's a nice man. Yes. He doesn't know he's talking to a couple of desperate characters. Stop it. We're not anything of the kind. No, but we will be if we get chased around much more. Listen, Betsy. Sooner or later, they're bound to catch up with us. Well, ring them again. Keep on ringing them. The only sensible thing to do is to go to the nearest police station and give ourselves up. Jimmy. Oh, oh, thank you. That's all right. Just make yourself to home. Thanks very much. the only sane thing to do. If we give ourselves up now, it won't be nearly as bad as if they run us down. All right. But it seems a shame after all the trouble we went to. place right now. Hey, listen here, Jake. If you'd quit this tomfoolery about wanting to be a detective, you'd get along better. And you stop ringing me up. It's a long walk to this telephone. Here's a good loot. Ephraim! Hello! Ephraim! Jake's catching thieves again. Ah, he's the card, that fellow. Come on, your move. Then that's what we'll do. We'll stop the first policeman we come to and give ourselves up. Well, but... if you think it's best... Look, just what we want. Oh, all right.
I beg your pardon. Are, are you the justice? I'm James Baxter, and this is Betsy Cummings. We've come to give ourselves up. Yes, we're the ones that stole the diamond, and we... Shh. He's Lou. Oh, will you run along and play someplace else, Jake? That Bernie, can't you see him busy? Listen, Ephraim, you're nursing a serpent in your bosom. That's James Baxter, the big diamond thief. Oh, shut up! Keep your mouth, get me disturbed, you... Not to take outside advice. Why'd you say that fella done, Jake? I don't know. Oh, yes, he's, he's a diamond thief. It's all right there in the paper. I knew it. I knew it the minute I laid my eyes on you. All right? You deny it? Of course I don't deny it. That's the reason we came here. Lock him up, Jonas. Yeah, lock him up. Yeah, lock him up. anything. I'm the one that stole the diamond. She's the one that stole the diamond. Ephraim, she ought to be searched. Jonas, this woman will have to be searched. She ought to be searched. Oh, oh but you can't do that. You can't do that. Do you, you mean we can't? This woman doesn't have to be searched. Give them the diamond, Betsy. Ooh. What's going on here? Ephraim, why haven't you come home to dinner? Now, just be patient, Sarah. I have a very important case here. Yeah, we've got a very important case here. Well, hurry it up. It can't be too important to keep my stew waiting. Beef or lamb? Lamb. They're both guilty. Lock them up. Yeah, lock them up. Stop, Jonas. Ephraim, are these two young folks married? Married? I don't know. Are you married? Yeah, are you married? Well, no, we're not married, but uh, I don't see what that has to do with... Oh, you don't? Well, let me tell you, young woman, we know right from wrong in this town. And there's only one cell in this jail. Yep, only one cell in this jail. By Jimmy, that's right. I never thought of that. And first. 
furthermore, dinner will be on the table in ten minutes. If you're not there, you don't eat. You don't eat? Sarah's right, Jonas. We got a mighty serious problem here. Yes, sir. A mighty serious problem. Only one thing we can do. What? We'll take turns about. Turns about? Put her in first. Put her in first, yep. Hey, wait a minute. That ain't fair. He's the one that gave you the bum checker move. Yes, but it was her that told you what to do, wasn't it? Lock her up. Lock her up. Come on. I hate to do this to you, young lady. That was certainly a swell move you gave me. All right, all right. Well, for the love of Mike, why don't you put some men on it? Some extra men. Let us get some place with this case. Police. Booey. Four o'clock. Well, what are we doing here? Let's get on here and get busy. I reckon we'd better get a hold of the fellow that owns the diamond so that he can prefer charges. Yeah, let's get him on the phone. Where'd he go? To the courthouse at Slade's Corner. He says something about a diamond. Now, when I'm looking for a complete uh, disguise, this is what I use. Pretty good, huh? Now, if I was going to after some bank robbers, I'd disguise myself this way. <laughs> Scare him, huh? Mm -hmm. Well, now, look here. Here's a farmer. And here is the man that owns the farm via a mortgage. Who well, are they going to pay that mortgage? All right, it's his turn to be locked up now. It's yeah, it's his turn to be locked well, up now. this is all a lot of nonsense. Hey, where are you going? We've already admitted the charges. Good dear young fella. You address this court, you say your honor. Your honor. All right, your honor. Miss Cummings and I have both admitted the charges. All right, Jonas. Bring the girl out. Bring the girl out. Yes, sir. There she is. The, the, the thief. What do you do with that diamond? Order in the court. Order in the court. Take off your hat. Now, are you the fellows that owns this rock? Yes, yes you are. Right. This girl stole it from out of my office. Well, it's a mighty fine stone, I'll say that. <laughs> there you are. Mighty fine stone. Well, now, maybe you're right at that. All right. Call the first witness. Young lady, will you take the chair? Did you steal the diamond? Well, it wasn't exactly as if I... Now, come on and answer. Don't quibble. Don't quibble. Well, you see, I uh, took it. I didn't steal it because I... Oh, you didn't steal it then, huh? Did he steal it? Why, why yes, I... Uh... No, he didn't, Judge. Uh, you see, I... Listen to me. If the diamond was in the possession of the plaintiff, and if you did feloniously and with malice aforethought, Enter into the premises of the said plaintiff in an illegal and separate, uh, surreptitious, surreptitious manner, 
and uh, thereafter steal, purloin, and confiscate the said diamond and remove it from uh, the uh, aforesaid premises. And uh, uh, why, uh, uh, who owns it? Answer yes or no. Yes or no. Then it's his, ain't it? No. It's mine. Dad! Just a minute, dear. Order in the court. Order in the court. There's a certified check for the amount due you. Where's my diamond? There's been a mistake, Your Honor. This is the gentleman who owns the diamond. Dad, Bernie, will you make up your mind? Yes, make up your mind. Well, you see, Your Honor, there really has been a slight error. Now, if you'll excuse us for just a moment, we'll be right back. Take off your hat. Yes, sir. Well, if it's yours, here it is. That's a mighty nice stone, and I I hate to give it up. He hates to give it up. Ephraim, are you coming home to dinner? Darling, just as soon as I unravel this uh, terrific mystery of... Uh... Now, young lady, will you explain all this? Uh, well, Dad, I'd like to explain Jimmy first. Uh, you see... Just a minute, folks. Let me see your hand. Well, we didn't take it. Hold on a minute. Gotcha, darn ye. What does this mean? Look there. Well, Jimmy and I, uh, well, Dad, we, we Mr. Just... Cummings, we'd like to get married. Jimmy, when? Well, why wait? Will you? Sure thing. I'll splice him in two shakes of a lamb's tail. He'll splice him in two shakes of a lamb's tail. I don't know what I'd do without your help, Jonas. Mm, I don't know what he'd do without my help. All right. What's your name? Yeah, what's your name? James Baxter. James Baxter. I've been after you two skin flints a long time. You're barking up the wrong tree. You got the wrong two guys. The camera don't lie, folks. Come along with me. That's for up there, Jake. <laughs> and I now pronounce you man and wife. Five dollars, please. Five dollars, please. Daddy, please. Oh. So it's that way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 